There's really three things we said we were gonna do when we started our business. Number one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna build this cloud. Two, we're gonna have a subscription model. And that became a recurring revenue stream and that was a whole different type of business model for software. And three, we said, you know, we're gonna put 1% of our equity, 1% of our profit, 1% of all of our employees' time into this 501c3 charity. This is Mark Benioff, one of the greatest founders of Silicon Valley. His company, Salesforce, has fundamentally reshaped the way businesses operate. The Salesforce story is the David and Goliath of the software industry. The company went from humble beginnings to the fourth largest software company in the world. Throughout this journey, it had to constantly compete with companies with significantly larger pockets. Salesforce succeeded through constant focus on customer needs and smart acquisitions. Today, Salesforce is one of the largest companies in the world with a strong business-to-business -business value proposition. And even if you're not familiar with its product, its software powers companies everyone knows, such as American Express, Toyota, and Spotify, with a market cap of $320 billion, just behind Netflix at $384 billion. The story of Salesforce is one of an innovative and revolutionary founder who has inspired and transformed the software industry. By studying its history and product, we can derive insights into how a small company can compete and overtake the toughest competitors. Join us on this occasion as we uncover the inner workings of Salesforce. The story of Salesforce is inextricably linked to its visionary founder, Mark Benioff, making any analysis of the company inseparable from his journey. Even as a teenager, Benioff was immersed in software, founding Liberty Software at age 15 and creating video games such as Escape from the Volcan Isle and The Nightmare. When he grew frustrated developing games for Apple's Macintosh, he complained to the company and unexpectedly received a job offer to work at Apple. After a while, he left Apple and joined Oracle then the fourth largest software firm, where he had the rare opportunity to work alongside Larry Ellison. During this period, Benioff became intrigued by customer relationship management, CRMs, and even became an early investor in Civil Systems, a leading CRM platform founded by a former Oracle employee, before ultimately leaving Oracle to start his own venture. Founded in March 1999, Salesforce is widely considered one of the first true software as a service, or SaaS companies. It went public in 2004 and reached a billion dollars in revenue just five years later, by 2009. In 2012, Forbes named Salesforce the most innovative company, solidifying its position as a leader in the tech industry. One of the key ideas that Mark would come to champion was that software had to be delivered differently. In the 90s and early 2000s, enterprise software was delivered by CD-ROMs. Most software had to be installed in the computers of the corporations. This meant that usually, once a year, a team would come to upgrade and install the software. But this model had a lot of issues. First, it was time-consuming, as the upgrade involved lost productivity as this was a very manual endeavor. Also, if any bugs were later discovered, it would be difficult to deliver patches, which meant that in most cases, they would be fixed until the next installment. It also limited the possibility of shipping better software when it became available, and required a lot of testing prior to releases, which made the evolution of software less dynamic. Customers also faced complicated contracts that hooked them to particular software for years. Instead, Benioff went for software delivered through the web, or cloud as it is known nowadays. Cloud software provided a lot of potential. First, upgrades and patches would be easier to implement, sometimes without the user even noticing. This meant that the workflow of the customer wouldn't be disrupted. As bugs could be fixed easier and without disturbing the client, this increased the cadence by which upgrades and functionalities were shipped, which led to Salesforce gaining an advantage over competitors. Another of Benioff's key skills was marketing. Mark promoted Salesforce as a revolutionary tech company, generating massive buzz. This generated a lot of news articles of how Salesforce was one of the most innovative companies in Silicon Valley. This caught the attention of people that eventually would give Salesforce a try and become lifelong customers. Salesforce became the first major SaaS, which later became the industry standard. Software as a service was delivered over the cloud, working 24-7 without disk or on-premise updates. This, as previously mentioned, allowed for faster improvements, easier fixes, and would generate strong economic modes for early adopters. Mark also implemented something called guerrilla marketing, where he would stage protests to get media attention. Benioff started a protest at a civil conference, at the time the largest CRM provider, clamoring for the end of software. While paradoxical for a software company to call for the end of software, he was really advocating for the end of on-premise software, pushing the internet cloud-based approach. 
This garnered media attention and helped Salesforce stand out against Siebel's on-premise model. This gave him many interviews that allowed him to discredit Siebel's product and prop up his own version of what software should be. But let's talk about what Salesforce actually does by first looking at what a CRM is. CRM stands for Customer Relationship Management. A CRM is a set of strategies, practices, and technologies that help businesses manage and analyze interactions with customers. The first versions of Salesforce were meant to facilitate and manage sales, offering lead management and tools useful to maintain those customer relationships. This evolved over time by constant upgrades and several acquisitions. Today, we can divide the Salesforce offering into three main categories, the core Salesforce platform, Slack and Commerce. Salesforce core offering began as a straightforward customer relationship management tool when the company was founded in 1999. Over time, it has evolved into a highly customizable platform anchored by three main components, Sales Cloud, Service Cloud, and a deep integration layer via App Exchange. The Sales Cloud, often cited as the top CRM solution globally, helps businesses manage leads, track revenue, analyze key metrics, and increase sales productivity through features like forecasting, and quoting. Meanwhile, the Service Cloud serves as an omnichannel customer support hub, allowing companies to build chatbots, integrate social media, and even deploy WhatsApp bots for customer service. The platform's flexibility is further enhanced by the App Exchange, a marketplace boasting thousands of third-party apps that allow organizations to tailor Salesforce to their unique needs by serving as a single source of truth where teams can store, access, and analyze customer data. The Salesforce platform has become a cornerstone for enterprises seeking scalable cloud-based solutions. Slack, acquired by Salesforce in 2021 for $27 billion, Slack is the largest purchase of the company's history and now a central pillar of its ecosystem. Designed to streamline workplace communications and collaboration, Slack offers real-time messaging channels, file sharing, and integrations with thousands of apps, ranging from AWS to Zendesk. These deep integrations, combined with Slack's daily role in many organizations' workflows, create high switching costs that make it difficult for companies to transition to alternatives like Microsoft Teams. By folding Slack into its broader Customer 360 vision, Salesforce provided a unified platform where sales, service, marketing, and development teams can collaborate seamlessly, all without leaving Slack's familiar interface. Commerce While Salesforce initially focused on CRM, it has more recently expanded into online retail through Salesforce Commerce, often referred to as Commerce Cloud. Comparable to solutions like Shopify, Commerce Cloud enables businesses to create modern customizable e-commerce websites that integrate tightly with Salesforce CRM and other key services. This integration ensures a seamless flow of data, such as customer profiles, order histories, and inventory across the entire Salesforce ecosystem. By consolidating commerce alongside sales, marketing, and service workflows, organizations can deliver personalized data-driven experiences and efficiently manage every customer touchpoint from a single cloud-based platform. Software is a relatively competitive industry with very low barriers to entry, as most of the top companies started with a couple of founders with a laptop. Every year we see multiple startups enter the industry to challenge the large goliaths of tech. Many companies like Skype, MySpace, and Napster have failed to become profitable business models. So how has Salesforce been able to keep its edge? From the outset, Salesforce has been developing what's called an economic mode. It is worth taking a few minutes to talk about this concept popularized by Warren Buffett. An economic mode is similar to the modes found on castles. A mode discourages competition. It can also be similar to barriers to entry. Basically, if you have a very profitable service or product, it is very likely that its own success will attract new entrants. A moat is what separates you from those competitors. Morningstar, an investment and funds research company, has done extensive research into economic modes and classifies them into five broad buckets, network effects, intangible assets, cost advantage, switching cost, and economies of scale. Salesforce has used many of these to carve out its market position and still holds some of them nowadays. At launch, Salesforce developed cost advantages by using the cloud software delivery. This allowed for cheaper development, which then allowed it to price their product below main competitor civil systems. As the product grew and improved, Salesforce developed high switching costs. Basically, once your corporation had been using Salesforce for a couple of years, it became part of the workflow of employees. Switching to a competitor would become very expensive in terms of lost productivity. 
and also very risky due to the potential loss of critical information or processes. This has led to really low churn rates. Furthermore, the more time employees have spent learning Salesforce software, the less likely they would want to try a new system and learn everything from scratch, without even counting if they've built systems, websites or functionalities on the platform. The introduction of the app exchange has also led to network effects. As Salesforce become more popular, more developers started to work on apps for the exchange. This made the core Salesforce offering more attractive, leading to more customers. This generates a positive feedback loop, where developers want to launch apps where there are potential customers, and customers want to go to the platforms where there are most functionalities. Salesforce continues to increase its competitive position by implementing AI. But as LLMs proliferate in the market, Salesforce does have a unique offering. One of the largest problems with AI is that you can't always trust what AI says. This is called the AI trust gap. Large language models sometimes hallucinate, producing plausible but incorrect information. Enter Einstein Copilot, trained on the metadata within the Salesforce ecosystem, providing accurate, trustworthy AI capabilities. Einstein minimizes hallucinations by rounding responses in an organization's own Salesforce data, ensuring data remains within a secure environment, avoiding potential leaks. Let's now take a look at the financials of the company. Salesforce is a giant in the industry, with sales of $34 billion in its 2024 fiscal year, with a market cap of around $320 billion. In the software space, it stands as the fourth largest company in the world. Salesforce has moved from builder to buyer, acquiring companies to expand capabilities. Salesforce's four largest acquisitions begin with the exact target in 2013 for $2.5 billion a digital marketing automation platform specializing in email campaigns, mobile messaging, and broader campaign management. In 2018, Salesforce purchased MuleSoft for $6.5 billion. MuleSoft provides integration software that connects applications, data, and devices across on-premise and cloud environments. The following year, Salesforce acquired Tableau in 2019 for $15.7 billion, adding powerful data visualizations and analytics capabilities to its portfolio. Finally, in 2021, Salesforce made its biggest deal yet by buying the enterprise communication and collaboration platform Slack for $27.7 billion, integrating team chat, file sharing, and extensive software integration into its ecosystems. Salesforce's strategy has worked in gaining the market share and has led to solid financial results. Let's take a look at how the company has done in the last decade. Looking at its sales, Salesforce has managed to grow at a 24.7 rate, Throughout the last decade, it is very uncommon for growth rates of this type to remain this high for so long, with Salesforce going from doing $4 billion in 2014 to $35 billion in 2024. Margins, however, have remained flat or worsened. When looking at gross margins in the last decade, we can see a slight deterioration. And while operating margins have significantly improved, they are still lagging behind peers. So what's going on? This can largely be attributed to acquisitions. When Salesforce acquires emerging software companies like Slack and Tableau, it is not uncommon for these type of companies to be losing money as they are acquired. This implies a negative impact to margins as soon as they are consolidated. However, it is likely that margins will pick up in the future, as they become more efficiently operated, as software tends to be a business with very high margins. Combining the outstanding pace of revenue growth and the slight deterioration in margins, we arrive to a 20% growth rate in operating profit. Overall, the results of the company have been great. However, some investors have criticized some of the decisions, mainly on the acquisition and margins front. Recently, an activist investor group tried to get the company to change its way and even installed a director to look after them. Some downside of the approach of Salesforce to acquisition has been dilution. Basically, during these acquisitions, Salesforce has issued shares, leading to a decreased share of the pie for ongoing investors. This can be seen in the large increase of shares outstanding in the last decade, leading to less value per share over time. Investors also were calling for a cost-cutting program as margins had deteriorated. However, after the recent improvement in the stock performance, this activist group has backed off. When looking at the performance of the stock, it seems that the overall strategy has worked even despite the challenges it has faced. However, Salesforce will probably have to run more efficiently if it wants to keep Wall Street at bay. Salesforce rise from pioneering SaaS provider to a global enterprise software leader demonstrates the enduring power of cloud-based innovation and strategic acquisitions. 
Over the years, the company has expanded beyond its core CRM into a robust platform that expands sales, service, commerce, collaboration, and data analytics. By consistently adapting to market needs and investing in AI initiatives like Einstein, Salesforce has achieved notable revenue growth, albeit with some scrutiny around margins and impact of large-scale acquisitions. Nonetheless, its ability to integrate new offerings into a cohesive ecosystem combined with enduring stickiness of its cloud service positions Salesforce as a key for shaping the future of enterprise software.